This is Joseph Kony, one of the world's most wanted men. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not guilty. Uh, I'm not guilty. As one of the most prolific killers in history, Kony and his commanders are wanted for crimes against humanity. He's a psychopath and he has got multiple personality disorder. Said to have supernatural powers, he has ruined the lives of millions. All I thought was that I would lose my life. That would be the end of me. He turned children into killers and ordered his commanders to rape schoolgirls. Are you proud of yourself? Or I'm you not proud. I'm only disappointed with my life. Now he's haunted by the UN and thousands of African troops backed by the planet's most powerful military machine. Our advisors will continue their efforts to bring this madman to justice and to save lives. This is the guy, Joseph Coney. He's the bad guy? Yeah. And he is the target of a global campaign demanding Coney be captured this year. And if we succeed, we change the course of human history. Tonight, Panorama joins the hunt for the leader of what Kony calls his Lord's Resistance Army and asks why, after 25 years of carnage, is this notorious warlord still at large? I cannot tell you whether it's going to be tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, or in a month's time, but eventually the man is going to go down. This is the front line of the hunt for Joseph Kony, a jungle almost the size of France. After a global campaign clamoring for the capture of Kony this year, I, as an African journalist, want to know what is being done on the ground to bring to justice the man who's terrorized millions. I joined a Ugandan army unit haunting him in the jungles of the Central African Republic. The Ugandans are being backed by American special forces, but still, Kony remains one step ahead. We are doing whatever it takes to make sure that we capture or kill Kony. Our last intelligence indicated that Joseph Kony is in Central African Republic. Kony may be anywhere because we don't have any mechanism of tracking Kony himself. If Joseph Kony, the leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA, had been 20 feet in front of me, I wouldn't have seen him. Man, this place is a real jungle. It's like in the middle of nowhere. Uh, searching for anyone here, particularly the LRA and Kony, who've mastered the tactics of the bush, it's like searching for a needle in a haystack. Do you have any information whether the LRA are around this area? Is that why, why you're going there? The LRA right now, we don't know their position. And they keep on rotating in the general area. One day, one time, we shall come across the, the truck. This camp was abandoned by the LRA just two weeks earlier. All these are now the enemy defense. It was discovered after a rebel defector led the Ugandans here. And this was the headquarters. The overall commander was here. They avoid movement from their position. That's why they can hide themselves here for more than a month. It's estimated 50 to 60 of Kony's fighters lived here, plus women and children. This child was one of them. Adam, said by his mother, to be Joseph Kony's five-year-old son. Abducted age 13, Dorina Bango escaped from the LRA just 10 days earlier. I saw that I was wasting my life, so I took the opportunity to come back. I started walking at night with my child, moving in such a way I didn't leave any tracks. If I was found, I would be killed. Doreen told me she hadn't seen Kony for four years. 
She is one of dozens of women he is accused of raping. He takes women in turns. Women go to him in turns. That's the nature of war. You're forced to do certain things. We as women, we do not have the power to refuse. We are afraid and want to protect our lives. The Ugandans believe Joseph Kony is in the Central African Republic. But the Lord's Resistance Army he leads are thought to be constantly on the move between here, Sudan in the north, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, which continues to suffer at their hands. Here, terrified families have sought sanctuary in refugee camps since the LRA started attacking in 2008. I headed to the newest camps, 300 miles southeast of the Ugandan position. The first people started coming in uh, the month of uh, March. Here in Dungu, people feel safe because the UN and Congolese army are based nearby. In the last six months, actually, we're talking of about uh, 10,000 people uh, in four camps. The terror the LRA caused in this region is totally disproportionate to their numbers. The UN estimates there are just 100 fighters left, but they continue to evade capture. They didn't attack me, but we ran because they killed people near us, so we were afraid. Do you think you can go back home? Not until the raiding and the war is over. This is the worst thing that has ever happened to us, and many of our belongings have been destroyed. Today, almost half a million people remain displaced by Kony's war. They're using fear creation tactics. The, the people have had that fear. They're so, they have that psycho thing in them, and that's why they would not want to go back. The LRA kills, the LRA mutilates, the LRA kidnaps, the LRA burns villages and public buildings. The people of Dungu have had enough. We want Joseph Kony to leave this region. We want Joseph Kony to be arrested and for us to have peace. Kony's war in this region started almost 300 miles away in Uganda in the late 1980s. Since then, the scale of atrocities has been apocalyptic. An estimated 100,000 people have died in this conflict and at least 20,000 children have been abducted, many forced to be child soldiers or sex slaves. What exactly is Joseph Kony fighting for? Six years ago, after months of negotiation, a film crew were led deep into the jungle to find out. Surrounded by heavily armed LRA fighters, this was to be the first and last time Kony gave a television interview. I'm a freedom fighter who is fighting for freedom in Uganda. But I'm not a terrorist. Kony denied murdering civilians and abducting children. I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. And he claimed holy spirits were guiding him in his mission to overthrow the Ugandan government. Spirit, they will come to us. They will lord to me. They will come through me. Then they talk to the people what to do. But if I'm also fighting for the commandment of God, is it bad? It's not bad. I have had to go to a crime profiler actually, Scotland Yard, to try to understand this man I've dealt with for a long time. 
Betty Bigombe is one of a long line of African leaders who tried and failed to talk Kony into making peace. His followers would say, oh, he's extremely kind, he's extremely generous, and yet he would rip people's tummy apart. He would order killing in the most brutal manner. Who is he? What, you know, who is this man? And the analysis, the report that came out is that um, he's a psychopath and he has got multiple personality disorder. To find out more about Joseph Kony, I came to the place where he was born, Odek in northern Uganda. Here I found one of the last surviving members of his family, Gabriela, his older sister. This is the first time she's agreed to be interviewed. God has brought a big curse on this family. This was our mother's lament. Kony has brought so much trouble on us up to now. Everybody hates us. Gabriela was there the moment Joseph Kony came into this world. When my mother was giving birth, I came and supported her. As soon as Kony was born, he stood up on his two feet. Everyone was astonished and wondrous, saying, this child is strange, this child is strange. When Kony reached his teens, he started hearing voices in his head. It seemed to me that he had developed a mental problem. My father tried everything to help Kony, but in vain. Even a cow was sacrificed, but in vain. Not everyone in Odek believed Kony was mentally ill. I found one of his old school friends, later to become one of the warlord's earliest disciples. A spirit had possessed Kony. That spirit, when his time came to speak, it entered Kony and completely transformed his nature. These spirits would go on to haunt this region for decades. By 1986, Kony was a young man, and many here in northern Uganda were rebelling against a new government. On this hill, he would claim to hear the voices of spirits, which were believed by his followers to predict the future. These voices would also later mark Kony out as a leader of the insurgents. Arrow down, arrow. People saw the potential and the possibility of a spirit that had possessed Kony, helping them against the danger of death that they thought was coming to them. I am amongst one of the people who accepted. I am one of those. By the early 90s, the rebellion was over, but the Odek prophet didn't put down his gun. Instead, he turned it on his own people for abandoning the cause. The cult of Kony and his Lord's Resistance Army was born. This has been like a terrible fire. It has resulted in the loss of very many young people. I see the wrong in it and the pain associated with it. We all suffered the consequences. Balonio, an hour's drive from Kony's village, suffered those consequences. It was a Ugandan government camp created to protect local civilians from the LRA. It failed. Lying under this concrete are the bodies of the dead, 301 people, men, women, and children, slaughtered by Kony's troops in February 2004. Silveria Ayugi was ordered to kill her husband. They asked me to cut his throat, but then a little child soldier told them not to ask of me an old lady to kill my husband. They took my husband and cut his throat while I watched. My child, his son, was also killed. 
Silveria's son, Oguan, was just eight years old. I think Coin was very conscious of what he was doing. I don't think the massacres that were committed by the LRA, they were the acts of individuals who were in discipline, but I think that they were all came directly from his orders. And I think he knew very well what he was ordering. Carlos Rodriguez was a priest at the time based at the heart of where Coney was carrying out his massacres. He listened in as the LRA leader talked on the radio to his troops. Sometimes he was very explicit in ordering massacres, laughing like a sadistic killer, saying, as he was laughing, that's very good, continue, you should kill even more, you should kill even elderly people, even children, don't leave anybody alive. Industrial scale killing, but Kony inflicted brutality on the living too. Godfrey Okelo, abducted age 10. Ojok Patrick, abducted age 14. Orion Michael, abducted age 10. Kony said it was war. If he sends you to fight, you have to fight. Much of the killing was carried out by child soldiers. Thousands and thousands of children were abducted by the LRA. Connie teaches saying that all civilians have been trained. They have arrows to use on us. Civilians also use knives and all sorts of things to injure us. Therefore, if we come across any civilians, we mustn't allow them to survive because they are bad people. While young boys were forced to become killers, Kony also had plans for young girls. This was the dormitory where I was that night. Um, Grace Achan was just 15 years old when she was abducted along with 30 other schoolgirls from St. Mary's Convent, Northern Uganda in 1996. I thought that would be the end of my life because I've heard a lot about LRA, that they're risky, they're dangerous, they can kill and whenever they get you, that would be the end of you. The girls were marched barefoot for two weeks north through the bush to an LRA camp in southern Sudan. There, Grace discovered her fate for the next eight years. The moment you begin your menstrual period, that's all. They will say, now you're ready for a man. That's what they would do. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter. That's what they would do. Grace was forced to become a sex slave. She was repeatedly raped by this man, one of Kony's most senior commanders. These days, it's not hard to find Kenneth Banya. He lives just down the road from Grace. What I don't understand, why did Kony specifically give these girls to be raped by the older guys, the commanders? Why? He was doing that be, 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 because he wanted to maintain people in the bush. You, you, do you understand? He want to keep people in the bush so that you don't think of other, other things. Yeah. But how do you think it is for youngsters like Grace who have gone through this without their permission? It is not only Grace alone. There are so many who are like Grace. I kept on thinking that now, how can I be given to such a man? It wasn't my choice. And he was basically forcing you every week? If you say no, they beat you. Did that happen to you? I didn't want to be beaten with a panga because I saw with my eyes what it is to be beaten with a machete. Grace gave birth to two children, a son and a daughter, both fathered by Banya. Then in July 2004, eight years after she was abducted, the Ugandan army attacked the Larry camp where she was being held. The first bomb landed on my, my son who was being carried by uh, another girl 
so they both died. I didn't see, but I was told. I could not, I didn't have a chance to see where his body was. Grace escaped with her daughter, Mercy, who is now nine years old. Her mother wants to put the past behind them, but is that possible? I wanted to know if the man who raped Grace showed any remorse. Why did you systematically rape a child like her who was 15 years over and over and over for years? Why did you do that? I did not rape Grace. In LRA, you are given by force. And the woman also, she's forced. But Kenneth, if you that was your child, 15 years old, somebody does that to her, I, how would you feel? I had no choice. You I had, had no choice. No, you because had a choice. I would be killed. It was a matter of either you die or you, 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 you agree and you leave. Panya was captured in 2004 by the Ugandan army. Despite his crimes, he was given an amnesty and is now a free man. How many girls yeah. did you rape in the bush? I did not rape, only Grace and the other two. Only Grace and the other two? And the other two, yeah. Are you proud of yourself? Or what I'm you not those proud because if I was proud, I would be talking proudly. I'm only disappointed with my life. Kenneth Banya. Have you forgiven him? Will you forgive him? That's a very hard question. You know, forgiveness comes from the heart. I feel like as if something has been taken out of me. Something, um, something valuable has been taken out of me. Back in the jungles of the Central African Republic, the hunt for Joseph Kony continues and the noose seems to be tightening. A military offensive led by the Ugandan army four years ago scattered his forces across the region. Now it's estimated there are only 450 LRA fighters left. And in May this year, just 60 miles from where we are, the Ugandans captured a senior LRA commander. This is his first television interview. Don't the long length of time Kony and his people, including myself, has spent in the bush, and the hardship and experience we have gone through, is what has given Kony the knowledge and skills to survive in the bush up until now. For almost 20 years, Achelam, seen here, was one of Kony's right-hand men. Since his capture, he has given the Ugandans vital intelligence about LRA movements. Achelam is now calling for an end to the fighting. Many of my colleagues are still in the bush, and they should come out. They must come out, and there should be no more fighting. If Kony doesn't come out, let him remain alone in the bush. So why has Joseph Kony been allowed to wage this war for so long? The Ugandans are now spearheading the fight to capture him. But for many years, one of the biggest obstacles to defeating Kony came from within their own army. Corruption on a massive scale. People were starting to profit from the war, so it became actually a business, and therefore, um, I think people had less interest in ending it. Um, and, and, and that, I think, proved a very serious problem. Most shocking was the discovery that around half the army only existed on paper. The scandal became known as ghost soldiers. For years, officers had inflated troop numbers to pocket wages and profit from selling supplies destined for fictitious soldiers. This secret government report from 2003 reveals a plague. Every single Ugandan army unit was involved. 
So it's, it's, it was a huge, huge problem. How far up it went, I really can't say. From what you're telling me, it's clear that Kony has been a convenient enemy at the expense of the lives of ordinary people. Well, without doubt, without doubt. Do you think that corruption helped to drag this war um, to where it is today? Oh yeah, it contributed. It contributed to prolonging the war. Despite past corruption, the Ugandan army of today, backed by American special forces, is widely believed to be the most effective offensive force to end this war. But what about other African armies haunting the LRA? Any other force other than the Ugandan army, the LRA doesn't fear. They only fear the Ugandan army. Feared they may be, but the fractious politics of the region bars them from operating in Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo. And according to the president, Yoweri Museveni, Uganda can't be expected to continue hunting Kony alone. Can you finish this war without Western support? Where we are now is an international mission, it's not a, a domestic mission. And we cannot be in an international mission on domestic resources. Why? It's not it's up to the international community to, to help. An African Union force of 5,000 troops, which could hunt for the LRA across the whole region, was due to begin operations in March. But it hasn't happened. International funding has yet to materialize. Francisco Madeira is the man asking for the money. You might call me a beggar, call me whatever you want, but the truth of the matter is that uh, resources are on one side and the wheel is on the other and work has to be done. Qu'il est une coopération réelle et effective. If a true cooperation were to take place among countries involved in this crisis, it would probably take a week to arrest Joseph Kony and to put an end to his abuses. I cannot tell you whether it's going to be tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, or in a month's time, but eventually the man is going to go down. Will Joseph Kony ever surrender to face his accusers in the International Criminal Court? Kony is afraid. He is really afraid. He is afraid of the accusation against him in The Hague. Maybe the end has already been written. He would tell me things like, you know, I know exactly how I'm going to die. I'm going to die like Hitler. One day people will wake up and they'll find out I'm, I'm I've been dead for some time. Is it too much to hope that Kony's war may finally be drawn to an end? There is a growing sense the moment may be lost because of politics and lack of funding. For the sake of Kony's victims, let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs>